Welcome to a comprehensive guide on how to create a first person controller setup inside of Armour 3D. There are many videos out there on YouTube talking about how to do this but this is the most updated and recommended one for you guys. Let's go ahead and do part 1 of 4 to get this up and running. This first step is obviously setting up the character itself. We need a collision mesh so that our object can collide with other objects in the scene and we can go ahead and add a camera. Once we have our camera set up in the position that we want, we can change the focal length, the FOV. I prefer to set it somewhere like 20 or 15 so it has a wider view. Now we can go ahead, select the camera, press Shift S and set it to cursor to selected object. So now what we're going to do is add an empty and that empty will automatically be added at the location of our camera which is ideal. Now we need to parent this all together so that the main object uh, that controls everything is obviously the collision mesh and the empty can also move the camera around independently of the mesh. The reason we're doing this is because we can rotate the collision mesh around normally perfectly fine on the z-axis but once we want to look up and down we have to rotate the object in a weird angle so it's not going to work which is why our empty is going to be our camera pivot to look up and down. Step two is actually setting up the camera movement so that we can move our camera around with our mouse. First of all we need a node tree so select the object and add in a new node tree. Open a node uh, window so you can start adding in new nodes and let's go ahead and grab an on update node because we want this to happen every single frame so we have a nice smooth movement. Now we need to rotate our object because that's how we're going to look around left and right. We need to rotate around our object. We don't want to rotate on all axes though so let's get the vector node so we can separate out the x, y and z axes because for this we only want the z axes. Now we need to get the mouse's movement so we can map that to our actual player. So we're getting the multiplied x which is obviously when we're moving our mouse to the left uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to map up our uh, math node to both the x and y and that way when we set it to multiply we can actually get the application time and this is going to give us access to the delta uh, function so now we can multiply this with delta time so we can go ahead and put in a variable probably something smaller because you don't want it to be too fast and too erratic that you can't control it so essentially what we're doing is we're using the, the mouse and let's plug in the multiplied y into the x and now when we're moving our mouse left and right it's going to move us on the z axis and when we move our mouse up and down it's going to move us on the x axis except it's not going to move the player because as we demonstrated previously we need to use the pivot now we can set up a basic scene so we have references in our scene I like to use a checker texture and there we go we can see we are moving around now there are some things to fix as you can see we can see our player and we need to limit the rotation and a bunch of stuff like that first of all we can decrease the main variable which is uh, the multiplied value which is going to make everything seem smoother by putting a lower value but this is also something that you can control programmatically so you can actually make a node tree that increases or decreases this variable and let's go ahead and add in a on click function which is just going to lock our cursor. I've set it to move simply because uh, it's easier and I'm going to press space to shut it down automatically but I recommend you uh, use a on click function not a not on move function. Now we have a few problems obviously we have uh, this camera that is pivoting round and round and round so let's go ahead and start limiting the camera's view. Now this is a very easy but long method so it's really easy to understand but it's not very efficient in space management. Let's go ahead and grab an on update node and grab a gate node. What we're going to do is we're going to grab a float which is going to be the maximum value that we can surpass. So I'm going to send it to 45 degrees so everything above uh, minus 45 degrees is great and anything below it is bad so and we have got to get the object's rotation every single frame and compare it so we need to separate them out so let's grab the rotation node set it to degrees remember not radiance degrees very important separate out that into the x-axis because that's what we're looking at and what we need to do is set it to uh, less equal now we need to obviously do something we need to set the object's rotation back to the limit so what we're doing every time it surpasses this limit that we set it's going to reset it to that limit so it's, it blocks it and we need to obviously set that rotation node to degrees as well, it's very important. Grab a vector node and now we want to put that x-axis vector back to that variable that we just set, that limit. 
Now about the other rotations they are on zero, we don't want to leave them at zero because that will just reset them. We want to keep them as they are, so plug them back into the separate XYZ because that's directly getting from the object rotation. So the only one we're modifying is the X axis. And there we go, now you can see we can't look down very easily. Well, it's set at 45 degrees, so I'm blocked here. You can increase that later, but for demonstration purposes, 45 degrees is good enough. Now we can duplicate the whole thing to block the top. So it's a very simple method. As you can see, it takes up a lot of space, but we just set this to a positive value, value like 45 degrees. And remember to set the gate node to uh, everything below 45 degrees is good. And now there we go, we have a limited camera position. You can see it's rather constrained at 45 degrees, so we can increase that later. Now let's go ahead and add in some movement so our player can run around the field and be happy and jumping around and whatever. Well, we're not actually going to implement jumping, but let's get the on keyboard node. Now this keyboard node is just going to need to be repeated for each different key. Now we can grab a translate object node and put this in for all of these. So this is a mass uh, optimized method. So we can grab the vector node, you can see, and plug it in. Now this is the most important part. We're going to grab a math node, and this is going to inverse our value, because our speed is going to stem from a single variable. So this variable is obviously positive 1, so it moves you forward. So here we're going to move it on the y-axis, so it's going to move forwards, and also on the d, but this isn't going to make it move forwards, it's going to make it move on the side, so we're going to go on the x-axis. And now we want to inverse those values, so obviously forwards and side to side uh, are positive, and backwards and the opposite side is negative. So we're just using that to plug in and inverse the values, but it all stems from that single variable. Now as you can see, we can move around pretty easily, but it is rather fast, so we can decrease that, and what we're going to do is obviously use delta time as usual. So let's go ahead and grab the application time node. This is going to give us a de delta function. We can set that uh, multiply with our variable, which we already have, and now just replace the sockets. Obviously there's only three sockets to replace, and there we go. Now everything's run through this multiplied by delta variable. So we can decrease or increase it more like because delta time is going to make it the same frame rate on all devices independent of their frame rate. So if you've got 120 FPS, it will be the same speed as if you've got 24. Just want to make sure you understand the movement system. We're just using a positive value and a minus value and plugging it into different vectors. So you can see on the top here we have x, y, negative x, negative y. So it's forwards, backwards, side to side. That's all we're doing. We're plugging in these two different values, either positive or multiplied minus. Thanks for watching, uh, this has been a very comprehensive and compressed guide on how to make an FPS. I think this covered all the basics, uh, there's no physics involved yet so you can go ahead and figure that out for yourselves, it's really easy, let's say so. You just apply an impulse and then you'll be able to jump. So if you go ahead and figure that out then I'm sure you'll be good to go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again someday.